Hallelujah and praise the Lord. Well, good morning, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. It's Sister Genevieve here, and I'm coming on here today to share with you some more um, powerful, uh, beautiful, encouraging words that, that our Lord and Saviour has given me to share with you because it will uplift you, it will encourage you, it will bless you and um, it will you know, help you to understand that time is short and that we are about to leave. Glory to God. Today is a Friday the 27th of September 2019 and um, I'm uh, away f doing a bit of minute, uh, missionary work. Um, we've I've got a few powerful testimonies to share, um, which I will do that when I get an opportunity. <clears throat> but before I want to, before we go out to do ministry today, I just so we're back in Bondi, and um, <clears throat> as you know, we were here a few weeks ago. But the Lord has sent us back to Bondi, <clears throat> and we're doing some ministry here in Bondi. Praise the Lord! God is moving in a beautiful way, and um, glory to God. His word is being is being delivered. And um, I don't want to take up too much time, so let me just get straight into the message. Before I do, let me just plead the precious blood of Jesus. Father, I come before you this day in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, and I give you all the glory and the honor and the praise. And I ask, Father God, that you will bless this message, Father God, Lord, that you will cover this message in your precious blood. I ask that you will put only your words in my mouth. Father, I destroy any work of the enemy, every plan of the enemy to hinder this message from coming through. I, I cancel those plans right now in Jesus' name. Um, and I just plead the precious blood of Jesus over this video and over this message. I plead the precious blood of Jesus over this day. And even as we go out to do ministry, I cover every, all of our footsteps with the blood of Jesus. I cover the whole atmosphere with the blood of Jesus. And I pray for all my brothers and sisters that they will be covered with your precious blood. And, um, and for all of our children and everyone's grandchildren to be covered in the precious blood of Jesus. We love you, Father. We give you all glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm going to get straight into it because I've got quite a lot to share. I've been wanting to do this for the last few days, but of course, like I said, it's always in God's timing, and this is the right time for me to do this um, as I've been really busy with ministry and other things. So all glory to God. So now let me begin to share, brothers and sisters. So, so now on Wednesday the 18th of September 2019 at 8.33pm, the Lord spoke a word to me and he said, The hour has come. 8.33 in the Strong's Greek Concordance is a yuli and means an open air courtyard of a mansion or a palace. Interesting. Remember I shared with you in one of my recent videos, um, the same uh, when the Lord had spoken about the, um, the reunion of that our extended family is waiting to meet us. And that was given to me 8.33 as well. And, um, and it's the same meaning, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. An open air courtyard of a mansion or a palace. We're on our way to heaven. Praise the Lord. And the hour has come. Hallelujah. Now, September 20th, 2019, the Lord spoke to me. And I just want you to be encouraged that remember when I deliver these words to you, brothers and sisters, um, even though the Lord is giving it to me, as I share it with you, understand if you're a bride, if you if you are in the body of Christ, the message is for you as well. So the Lord gives it gives them to me to share with you. So so put yourself in 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 um, in my situation, the Lord's not just speaking to me; um, it's He's speaking to you as well. Glory to God! So the Lord has spoken to you, and He said, "Daughter, son, the hour has come." September twentieth, two thousand and nineteen, the Lord spoke to me, but He's speaking to you as well. And He said, "You have been through much calamity. You have been through much." <clears throat> Calamity after calamity after calamity. 
Your true fairy tale begins on the 29th. Glory to God. There we go. The Lord keeps reminding me the 29th. He's speaking of Feast of Trumpets, brothers and sisters. You can't make this stuff up. So then, later on that same day, at 9.37 a.m., the Lord spoke to me. And um, so that was the same day, September 20th, 9.37 a.m., the Lord spoke to me. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> so what happened is I was pondering on the message the Lord had given me earlier um, about how our true fairy tale begins on the 29th. And I was just thinking of those beautiful words. And then the Lord sweetly whispered to me and he said, It's true, my princess, it's true. So I was blown away by that, brothers and sisters. So the Lord is saying, it's true, my child, it's true. Um, so now, Friday 20th of September at 12.42 p.m. Um, oh, before I, I share that message, as I had said that the Lord had given me that message when he said, it's true, princess, it's true. Um that was at 9.37 a.m. So the Lord prompted me to look up 9.37 in the Greek Strongs. Brothers, it is basilikos and it means royal. It means to be connected with a king. Royal, regal, an officer in the service of the king, the king's country. What comes to me is um, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, and I encourage you to read that. Um, we are a royal priesthood, brothers and sisters. And how fitting that the Lord would give that message to me at 9.37, um, telling me that our true fairy tale is about to begin, and then him saying, it's true, princess. And the meaning means to be connected with a king. Oh, wow. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. So now, 12.42, Friday the 20th of September, the Lord spoke a word to me, and he said, Your wedding day is here, Genevieve. But now you're a bride. Put your name there, precious brothers and sisters. So now 1242 in the Greek Strongs is diatheki, if I've said that right. Brothers and sisters, it means a covenant. It means a will. It means a testament. Do you believe it? The way the Lord is speaking to us? Glory to God. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, just let me have a bit of water. Excuse me. <clears throat> okay, now, brothers and sisters, September 21st, which was a Saturday, at 8.11 a.m., Actually, no, I'm not going to read that message to you now because I need my daughter, Savannah, um, because she got a backup message um, regarding this same message the Lord gave me. So in my next video, which will follow pretty much straight after this video, um, because I want to get all these messages out today. We're running out of time. If we had to go home, Rosh Hashanah, well, then these messages need to come out today. So... I will share the backup message that I got and that my daughter got to confirm that the Lord was speaking to us both. I will share that uh, when Savannah's with me. Um, now, well, okay, so 21st of September, Saturday, um, at 2.37 a.m., the Lord spoke a word to me, and he said, Judgment is about to fall on this world. Brothers and sisters, 8.10 a.m., the 21st of September, Saturday, the Lord spoke to me and he said, I am coming for my true children on the 29th of September. Wow, brothers and sisters, I was blown away when I got that message. Holy Spirit was all over me. And I just, I just, you know, realized there how the Lord said he's coming for his true children. So, um... <clears throat> You know, I want to encourage you, you know, um, there's only one true way to be saved and to count yourself a true child of God. <clears throat> it's by being born again and filled with his spirit. And it's because Jesus said you must be born again if you wish to enter the kingdom of heaven. See, many people think that they're saved, but they don't actually have a personal relationship with Jesus. They're not filled with the Holy Spirit. 
um, you know, they don't read their Bible, they don't live for the Lord, they don't even live a life of repentance, they don't live their life honoring God and serving God, they don't live in holy fear of God, they trample on His blood. Um, you know, and they're the same Christians that will scoff and mock and uh, accuse and slander God's true children. You know, and this is that, that religious spirit dwelling in them. They think that they're saved, but they're not. So I want to encourage you, if you're listening to this message and you are unsure of your salvation, I want to encourage you, it's not too late to just humble yourself. Come before the living God. Humble yourself. Let go of all pride. Repent. Start repenting today. Start spending time in His presence today. The Bible says that we are to pray. Um, we are to pray that we are counted worthy to escape all these things that are coming on the earth. Time is so short, and if we are to go, if we are to go home in the next couple of days, brothers and sisters, on Rosh Hashanah, then you know you don't want to be left behind, and you don't you don't want to be saying, you know, if only I had listened to God's true children. You know, today is the day of salvation. Maybe you've never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. It's not too late for you if you're hearing this message. Come to Him now. Look around you. All the signs are there. It's not just that God's watchmen and watchwomen are warning you and the Lord is giving us messages to share with you, but it's also that, you know, the evidence is also in the prophetic events that are taking place right now as, um, as, I, as I speak, you know, and it's everywhere, you know. So, um, so now, um, so there we go. So that was the Lord, was what the Lord said. My, I'm coming for my true children on the 29th of September. 18th of September, 11.46 p.m., I heard so loud and clear in my spirit. Death to America. Wow. Death to America. Judgment is about to fall on Babylon. Babylon is America, brothers and sisters. The Lord has revealed this to much of his bride, okay, to many of us. He's revealed it to us. Um... Now, 12.11 a.m., Wednesday, the 18th of September, I had a powerful vision of Jesus and me in, um, in our bridal clothing. So I was wearing a bridal gown and Jesus was in a beautiful suit. And we were at, we were at our wedding and the wedding was taking place. It was a beautiful vision, right, just a flash vision. And um, it was just such a pretty scene. It, it was so beautiful. Um, and then... That was given me 12.11, and I was prompted to look up the meaning. Brothers and sisters, 12.11 in the Greek Strongs is day, D-E, and means indeed. It means now. It is, it is used to give emphasis um, or urgency to a statement. Whoa. It means truly. It means indeed. In a cause expressing demand. We're going home. Praise the Lord. So now picture yourself in that bridal gown or in that suit. If you're a bride of Christ, if you're a son or a daughter of God, and understand the Lord is saying to you um, um, that he's basically telling us, indeed, it is now, okay, um, truly indeed, okay, it is now, the time is now, okay. Now, let me see. What else? Okay, I'll share about the chariots. Will I have time? Yes, I'll have time to share. So the Lord's um, really been speaking to me a lot about the chariots. Okay, um, this is what I got. At 12.16 a.m., 18th of September, 2019, the Lord spoke a word to me, and he said, The chariots are here, my darling. The chariots are here. Now, you know the story about chariots. Well, we know Elijah went to heaven in a chariot. He was raptured and he was taken, okay, by a chariot of fire, okay? And that's in 2 Kings chapter 2, um, verse 11. Um, and I encourage you, you can read through these scriptures. I won't have time to read the scriptures I'm giving you. Usually I like to read read the scriptures but I'm just rushing and if I have an opportunity in, in one of my next videos I will read out all these scriptures um, okay so so now uh, glory to God so the Lord says the chariots are here my darling the chariots are here and so the scriptures 
uh, I'll read a couple of scriptures for you, but the others I will read um, in, in one of my next videos. And regarding the chariots in Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 13, the scripture says, Behold, he shall come up as clouds, and his chariot shall be as the whirlwind. Glory to God. Brothers and sisters, in Isaiah chapter 66, verse 15, it says, For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. Psalm 68, 17 says, The chariots of God are 20,000, even thousands of angels. The Lord is, coming, the Lord is among them as in Sinai, in the holy place. Glory to Jesus. Brothers and sisters, at 12.52, um, on the same day, the Lord spoke a word to me, and he said, Jesus, oh no, sorry, the Lord did not speak a word to me. I heard a word, I believe it was an angel that spoke this word to me, and this is what I heard. I heard so loudly in my spirit, Jesus, is coming to pick you up on the 29th of September. He is coming for you in a golden chariot and he is going to take you straight to heaven. Be ye ready. I was blown away, brothers and sisters. Um, and then the Lord led me to the vision that, um, that Ezekiel got. And again, I'll read the that of that vision of Ezekiel when he spoke about he had a vision of God's chariot, okay? Um, so, you know, that's for you. You know, if you're a bride of Christ, um, Jesus is coming for you in a golden chariot. So my understanding would be that we're raptured up to meet him in the clouds. And um, and then, because chariots are vehicle, I mean, whether it's a horse, um, you know, the same chariot that Elijah went up in, that was driven by horses, okay? It was a chariot of fire. Horses led that chariot that Elijah was in. Um, so if Jesus, um, you know, when we get raptured, we will meet, the Bible says that the dead in Christ will rise, and then we who are alive and remain will rise up and we'll meet the Lord in the air, and so we'll be with the Lord forevermore. So when we meet the Lord in the air, this is just my my understanding you know when the lord's been ministering to me nonstop on the chariots i've had many messages where the lord said that i will go to heaven in a chariot um and uh so when the when this angel said to me that he's coming on the 29th and he's coming in a golden chariot and he's going to take you straight to heaven my understanding was that you know um jesus is coming in his golden chariot we'll meet him in the clouds and um and there might be lots of chariots you know, um, maybe some will ride in Jesus' chariot with him. I don't know how it's going to work, but I'm just speculating. It's okay for us to speculate. But I, I thought that was really encouraging about the the chariots, the messages I'm giving, been getting about the chariots. As the Lord had given me the message, uh, as I had received the message at 12.52 by an angel about how Jesus is coming to pick us up on the 29th of September in a golden chariot, and um, as I had read that, the Lord, or as I had received that message, the Lord reminded me of a word that He had given me in February 2019. And I remember just before I got this word, I just heard um, the song playing in my spirit, um, which was odd because I don't listen. I don't listen to worldly music. I mean, even well, this song that I'm about to tell you, it's not well. You know, there's nothing bad about this song, but the song was. Um, uh, where is it? Uh, you know, um, I think it's by Daryl Bra Braithwaite. Um, we'll go riding on the horses, yeah, yeah. Way up in the sky, little darling. And if you fall, I'll pick you up. So that was the song, okay, that I heard in my spirit. And I just thought it was amazing because, you know, um, horses riding in the sky um it's just amazing and, and i knew it was the lord encouraging me and i was like wow we'll go he was saying we'll go riding on the horses way up in the sky you know um so um when he had sung that to me um instantly i got a message 
And this was in February 2019, brothers and sisters. And the message that I got was this. The time is up. The time is surely up. I will receive you shortly. You won't be here for very much longer. The veil is being opened. It is all about to unfold. It is now. It is now. It is now. I am coming for my true bride. My horses are ready. My angels are ready. And my chariots are ready. Say goodbye to this world because in an instant you will be transported to heaven. Glory to God, brothers and sisters, um, that the Lord would even remind me of that message he had given me when, you know, after I, I received the 1252 message about Jesus coming to pick us up in a golden chariot, I was blown away and obviously so filled with joy because, you know, now more than ever, the Lord is really confirming that he's coming for us, brothers and sisters. So now... 12.31 a.m., Saturday, September 21st, 2019, I had a vision of Jesus, um, and Jesus was talking to an angel. And this angel had like a, like a, a book in, in his hand, and he was writing, he, he had like a checklist, and he was writing down and marking things. And this is the, the vision I saw, Jesus speaking to an angel. And instantly I heard Jesus say to the angel, Genevieve is coming on the 29th. Then the angel ticked my name. So the angel had a checklist, a checklist and he was ticking off all the names that Jesus had mentioned. And they were the ones, the Lord gave me the understanding that they were the ones that were going to be taken on the 29th of September in the rapture. I didn't hear of any other names, but the, obviously I, the Lord gave me understanding that the Lord was basically, I guess you could say he was separating the wheat from the tares. <laughs> you just put that in my spirit now, that he's separating the wheat from, from the tares. So um, so the Lord was just basically, um, this this angel was, was ticking the names, and the Lord was confirming with this angel, that Holy Spirit is all over me right now, brothers. This is, you can see my hairs are standing up and I've got goosebumps. Oh, I've got holy bumps. So, glory to God. All I want to say is make sure that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. It's not too late. Make sure you, you are living for the Lord. You're filled with the Spirit. You're reading His Word. And now more than ever, just start spreading the Word that Jesus is coming. Start telling your neighbors, your friends, don't be worried about looking like a fool. I look like a fool every day, okay? I look like a fool every day. I mean, I even have people laughing at me, mocking me when I'm preaching on the streets. But you know what? That is a ploy of the enemy. The enemy wants to make you feel this small. He wants to make you feel stupid. But he knows it doesn't work with me because I know the tactics of the enemy. Um, so I just rise up and when I see that happening... I just begin to to speak, you know, with, with boldness. And I don't know, it's the Holy Spirit. All I can say is the Holy Spirit that does it. Um, I'm not, I know a lot of people are worried about being ridiculed, being mocked, being scoffed, being laughed at. But your Savior was rejected. He was despised. He was hated. He was mocked. He was laughed at. They made a fool of our King, okay? They thought he was a fool, but they were the fools, they were the fools because they rejected the Lord. And it wasn't until he was crucified that many of those soldiers who were crucified, you know, the minute it turned dark when Jesus took his last breath and there was an earthquake, and, um, you know, I believe that many of them, and then the, the, the veil in the temple was torn in two, that's when many of them began to realize that, oh, my goodness, surely this must have been the Son of God. What have we done, you know? Um, so... Don't make that same mistake in these last days of mocking and scoffing the children of God and, um, and you know, rejecting Jesus Christ and making fun of all this stuff and making fun of everyone who's preaching on the return of Jesus or on, you know, on, on Jesus coming back because 
You're going to be just like those soldiers. When the rapture happens and we're gone up, you're going to be like, oh my gosh, surely those watchmen and watchwomen that the Lord had sent were of the Lord. Oh my, and you're going to be sitting there with your head in your hands and saying, if only I listened. Don't be like the soldiers who made that, who made that mistake. They were mocking and scoffing right up until the very moment that Jesus took his last breath. And then darkness fell on the earth, destruction fell. You know what? It's going to be the same way as it was when Jesus was crucified. When we are out of here, sudden destruction is going to fall on this world. Okay? There'll be a massive earthquake. So there'll be, it'll probably turn to darkness. Okay? It'll be a replay of what happened when Jesus was, was crucified. Okay? We're about to be lifted up out of this evil world. The Bible says, first, the restrainer will be removed. The restrainer is the Holy Spirit. Okay? And the Antichrist cannot, I mean, the enemy, he is ready to attack. I mean, he, he can't even begin to do half of what he wants to do while we as a bride are still on earth. But let me tell you right now, brothers, brothers and sisters, once the restrainer is removed out of the way, well, if you have the Holy Spirit living inside of you, if that same precious Holy Spirit lives inside of you, you too will be taken up out, out of the way with the Holy Spirit. And then sudden destruction will fall on this wicked Christ-rejecting, evil world. You don't want to be here when that takes place. Okay. Um, <clears throat> get right with God now, or you're going to be left behind, and you're going to suffer the most horrendous of things. I mean, there's a true horror story that is about to begin on the face of this earth. Take the first flight, which is the rapture of the church. Get ready now. Get in right standing with God now before it's too late. Okay, so, so, um, so now, uh, let me see. So now, so as the Lord had given me that message, um, at 12.31, he had given me the vision of him speaking to the angel and the angel marking off all the names that Jesus was mentioning. That message was given at 12.31. And in Greek Strong's 12, 12.31, is diagnosco, if that's how you say it. And it literally means to determine. It means to distinguish. It means to no 